I want to say good evening to each and every one of you, acknowledging that you are very special people. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you tonight. But more special are the girls, because they are the reason why this school exists. And uh, I'm very privileged that I have the opportunity to share some of my thoughts, which I hope they will inspire you in your future life. I want really to apologize why I have to leave early, but I think it's important to tell you what, what, what is the reason. As it was quite uh, rightly mentioned here, Ruth lived in Mozambique. She established the Center for Development Studies at the University of Edward Mondlane. And she worked there for many years at the time I was Minister of Education, and that's my direct connection with her. And you were told that she was killed in Mozambique, which says that her blood has nurtured what Mozambique is today. The reason why I have to leave tonight is because tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, the President of Mozambique and the President of South Africa are going to unveil a memorial to seven South Africans, young MKs at the time, who were living in Mozambique and they were engaged in the struggle for the freedom of this country. They were betrayed by someone who tipped the uh, defense forces uh, where they lived and one day to the surprise of all of us the house where they were living it was attacked and seven of them in one minute they were wiped out so they also nurtured by the blood the freedom of Mozambique but I want to say that uh, our history of relationship, and this is very important for you girls, the history of uh, relationship between uh, South Africa and Mozambique goes beyond this. And uh, you know for the onset of the mining industry in this country, hundreds and thousands of Mozambicans have been coming they have been working here, and many of them, they died here. So the relationship between Mozambique and South Africa, it's not only political. It really was built in this sharing, and it was cemented by the blood of those who sacrificed for the two countries to be who we are today. And because of that, we are also bound to continue this relationship to make it grow and to offer it as a, a legacy to generations uh, to come. I've been asked to, to talk a little bit about Ruth. And I think you have been uh, uh, told enough about her career. And I'm not going to dwell on on that. But there are two things which I believe it's very important, particularly for you girls. She schooled here and she uh, built the foundations of what her personality would become much later. So a good education, to be in a good school, it's extremely important because it builds those foundations. And you are here, like she was here. And at that time, she never thought that she would become the great person she came to be. My message to you is to say, while you are here, take the best 
which the school can provide to you. Use that as foundations for any choices you are going to make in future. You'll always remember that the roots were planted here and what you are going to become will be related on how best you are going to use the lessons and the values this school is developing. This is one. The second thing about Ruth is that she made extraordinary <coughs> choices in life. I'm going to mention some. She was part of a family you could call a well-off family. She could have chosen just to remain in her comfortable position and grow up and have a professional life which could have been fulfilling. But she used her very sharp mind to see beyond her own family, beyond the community she was uh, living in, and to embrace what South Africa and South African nation, even at that time when South Africa was still a divided nation, she was able to understand the importance of becoming engaged in thinking, in shaping, in molding, and even in building a South Africa in which everyone would be valued and everyone will have a place and a sense of belonging. She crossed all the boundaries of the time. She was white, but she never defined herself as a white person. She defined herself as a South African, and that's why she worked with everyone. She was, as I said, privileged. She could have remained where she was, but she crossed the class divide, and she embraced every single person and she embraced the struggle, joining the millions and millions of oppressed South Africans at the time. She crossed the boundaries of gender. She never defined herself only as a woman, but more than that, as a citizen of this nation. She even crossed the boundaries of ideology. Many of you, you know that Ruth was communist by option. But she didn't engage the struggle as a communist. She was a South African who fought for freedom of all South Africans, regardless, now I will repeat, regardless of the class, of the social structure that could be belonging to, regardless of gender, and regardless of Anything which could make us different, she would see human dignity as the common denominator of everyone. Why I'm mentioning this? Today, in South Africa, there are people who are questioning whether we are or we can become a rainbow nation. There are those who say, the rainbow nation uh, is, uh, is misplaced, or they can use other words. I want to remind you that far before, whether it was Nelson Mandela, or it was Desmond Tutu, or whoever who has defined a South African nation as a rainbow, Ruth first, by action, she defined what it means to be a rainbow nation. Precisely because she didn't recognize any kind of boundaries. But for her, freedom and dignity for everyone, it was what defined what a citizen is. Now, we, we hear many times a discussion, for
For instance, in your case, whether you are black or you are white or you are colored or even Indian, I want to say to you, you are here because you are South African children. It is not because of your race. You are the generation which, in practice, because of the environment you are schooling in, you are receiving the same education, the same treatment, with no discrimination. These are the foundations of equality amongst human beings, regardless of whatever is the color of your skin, regardless of whether you are a woman or you are a man, regardless of what you believe. You can believe anything, and you can even in future decide that you want to join this or that party. But what is important is what makes you equal. And I want to say to you, cherish this. Nurture that sense of belonging as South African children and focusing on what is making you equal and not what can appear as if making you different. I want also to say to you, Ruth was that kind of a person who <coughs> was so self-confident of herself that uh, she never related to people with any sense of either of inferiority of superiority. You are in a privileged school and when you cross the gate of this school, no one will ask you where is your home, what kind of food you are eating, nothing of those kind of things. Why this is important? is to build in you the foundations for you to move beyond what can be a social structure and to build a society in which people will be valued from who they are and how they contribute. Here at school, you are all valued in how excellent you are. Huh? And that's why in your case, you won. I mean, the a scholarship, it's because you are amongst the best. That is exactly how you have to be. A good citizen who is aspiring to do the best you can. Even in conditions in which you may not be the best among the best. But what you have to develop is the sense that whatever I do on a daily basis, I have to do the best I can. That alone, it means excellence. So, walking on the footprint of someone like Ruth, in one sense, is challenging. But on the other, it is just to live your daily life the best you can. That's all what is required. And if you do that, in your studies, in the way you relate to one another, in the way you relate to your teachers, the elderly people, etc. When you do that, in a very smooth way, you are building what will be, make you become exactly a root first scholar. So, the being special, it is built on the ordinary and the regular things of every day. Don't feel the pressure of, oh, now I have to be different. Uh -uh. I have to be the best I can. And whenever you do things and you are with your conscience that you did the best you could, then you are 
viewer, the real, I mean, scholar of the great women we celebrate in this school. I want to uh, conclude, maybe uh, making an appeal to all of us here. This is a country and this is a nation which has sacrificed immensely. It has been given to us as a legacy by those who have been sacrificing. Some of them, they are no longer with us and others are still here. This is a nation where there is a great potential and a great opportunity. But it's still a nation where there is still a lot of uh, human suffering. We are challenged to feel extremely uncomfortable that there are still South Africans who do not have food on the table. It challenges our consciousness to know that uh, what we call gender violence in uh, the rates we have in our society is an expression of our inability to relate to one another and accept one another and to communicate without violence. Sometimes violence is not only when you beat or kill. It's also the words we use with one another. I think as South Africans we are challenged to learn to accept one another and to live with one another <coughs> and to communicate in a way we see ourselves in the other so that the other will see himself or herself in us as well. <coughs> that means for you girls, in 10 years time, now you are maybe adolescents I would say, you'll be young ladies. We hope you'll be growing in a society which men and women will accept one another and we will not witness the levels of gender violence which we see. And more importantly, that you will grow and you affirm yourself as young women in a society where you don't have to fear that anyone can violate you. And you feel safe, you feel cared for, and you give the best of yourself also to care for others. What I'm saying is that our schools, like this school, have to be exactly the place where we nurture those values. And I'll repeat myself, in which every South African is accepted and valued regardless of race, regardless of gender, regardless of class, regardless of ideology, in which we all are simply South Africans. Second, our schools like this have to become a place where the values of respect for one another and communicating in a loving and caring way become the foundations not only of a social cohesion but really of a society in which anyone will feel safe and cared for. I want to wish you and to congratulate you.
for having won the scholarship. I want to apologize as it has been said that I will not be able to stay to the end of this ceremony and I want to thank very sincerely the privilege which was given to me to be not a guest speaker because I'm not a guest speaker but as someone who could uh, come and share with you the beauty of having a school which continues from the time <coughs> it was built until today to be an example of what a school should be. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Michelle, for taking time out of your busy schedule to grace us with your presence here tonight. It was a great pleasure to hear about Ruth, First, Ruth First's great qualities on a personal level. Thank you for reinforcing how important a solid school foundation, such as what is offered here at Jeppe Girls, is. I greatly enjoyed your words of wisdom on equality and the true meaning of being a good citizen. Thank you once again, Mrs. Michelle, and please accept a small token of our gratitude.